Hello guys, welcome back. It's been a while. Today we're going to take a look at the Sony a7R5. This is the original flagship Sony full frame mirrorless. Although now they have more expensive cameras like the a9 and the a1. This was where it all started just about nine years ago and which is in itself a great achievement in my opinion for them to be on their fifth iteration in just nine years considering Canon and Nikon used to update their flagship cameras every four years or so. I'm not saying all manufacturers need to update all of their cameras every two years you know like with most modern cameras nowadays all we see are some incremental updates on their autofocus systems and video specs so what makes this camera any different? Well we're gonna find out today. And before we get started, I would also like to thank BNH for lending me this camera to make this review. And as always, they did not ask me to make this review. I simply asked for the camera and they've graciously provided it. And after watching this video, if you think this is the right camera for you, please check out the link in the description. And even if you don't think this is the right camera for you, please check out other products on their website. And if you make a purchase through the link, you're not only supporting a great business, I also get a small commission from the sales, which helps me continue to make free contents like this for you. So with that out of the way, let's get started. Starting with the hardware, at least aesthetically, this is probably the least amount of change that we've seen on any Sony cameras. The layout's pretty much identical to the a7 IV, which was the last camera that they released. The exposure compensation dial is now blank, and they've also moved the movie record button to the top. I wasn't a huge fan of this change at first because, yes, it made more sense for cameras like the a7S III or the a7C, uh, but for someone like me who's been using their a7 cameras mainly for steals now i've got a giant red button at the top where my white balance button used to be but i guess at least they're going to make this consistent throughout the board now so switching between bodies would be a little less confusing but the biggest upgrade on the body this year is of course the screen and for years so many photographers and videographers and hybrid shooters have been arguing about the screen designs and I guess Sony just got tired of everything and decided to basically combine everything and come up with what is actually a pretty clever design. So if you were someone who used to like the original tiltable screens on the older bodies, um, you now also have a way to tilt the screen vertically, which is nice. And if you're someone who likes the fully articulating screens, you now don't have to worry about some of the ports being blocked. So it really is the best of both worlds. And I really admire Sony here for listening to their customers and trying something different. And some other updates that you can't see in the video, they've upgraded the EVF. I think this is the same unit that they put on the A7S III. At least on paper, the specs are exactly the same. It's extremely high res and it's ginormous and looks really, really good. And they've also added a new IBIS system, which supports up to eight steps of compensation, which is the same number as the Canon R5s. But unlike the Canon's IBIS, it works with pretty much any lens. It doesn't have to be one of the newer lenses or the ones with image stabilization. It works with pretty much any lens. So like I said, at least visually, it doesn't look like a lot has changed from the previous cameras. Uh, I feel like Sony has finally kind of found their recipe and they're sticking to it instead of just kind of randomly changing things for the sake of changing them. The previous model, the a7R4 and the a7S III and the other a7 cameras, they all had like different SD card slot doors for some reason but I feel like they're like they're happy with this recipe and um, they're just gonna make some small incremental updates here and there instead of just changing the whole layout again my only complaint on the body design um, I kind of wish they just delete all the labels of the customizable buttons now like kind of like what they did on the exposure compensation dial like do all the buttons need labels C1, C2, C3 they don't even mean anything and when you go into the menu to customize the buttons the numbers don't even match up to the actual button numbers. And again, same goes for the movie record button. If I'm someone who doesn't shoot videos, then do I really need to be looking at that all day? So why not just let the user decide what they want the movie record button to be? But obviously, these are just some really minor things. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. In terms of image quality, 
not much has changed. Actually, nothing has changed because it is the same 61 megapixel sensor from a7R4. This is still the highest resolution camera that Sony currently makes and still the highest resolution camera in its class. Whether or not anybody needs a 61 megapixel sensor is a different matter, of course, but as long as you're willing to deal with the file size, there's very little downsides. And you will be dealing with big files because one uncompressed 14-bit RAW file from this camera is over 120 megabytes. So just after seven or eight shots, there goes a gigabyte of your storage space. Even compressed RAW files are over 60 megabytes. However, the good news is Sony did finally add some new shooting modes, which lets you shoot lossless compressed images in 61, 26, or 15 megapixels, which vary in sizes around 80, 50, and 40 megabytes respectively. With its updated processor, which according to Sony can process images eight times faster than before, the overall operation feels very snappy even while shooting 61 megapixel bursts. While recording simultaneously to two UHS-2 SD cards, I was able to shoot over 80 shots of 14-bit RAWs until the buffer filled up, which is already pretty good, but according to Sony, you can shoot up to 583 shots with compressed RAWs. And that is pretty impressive, but one reason the buffer feels so big is because the burst rate on this camera is pretty slow. And this is about the only real weakness of this camera on the still side. While shooting 14-bit RAW, you can only shoot up to 6 frames per second, which is comically slow in this day and age, and for its price. You can shoot up to 10 frames per second with the 12-bit compressed RAW, but the key word there is up to. Depending on your autofocus modes and your subjects, more realistically, you can probably expect about eight, which isn't terrible by any means, but compared to something like the Canon R5, this isn't just very fast. Sony also added what they're calling the new AI processing unit, which in their words, drastically improves the camera's subject recognition, not only for human subjects, but also for animals, birds, animals slash birds insects and cars and trains and airplanes i guess the artificial intelligence can't quite differentiate everything on its own yet so you have to tell it what you want but jokes aside subject tracking in general was excellent and even in extremely dark environments it was able to find the subjects and hold the focus really well i mean the autofocus on the a7r4 wasn't bad but there's just a lot less situations where you feel like you need to fiddle with the autofocus settings because something didn't feel right moving on to video there are mainly three updates they've added 8k recording in 24 frames per second 4k 60 and like they did on most other models they've gotten rid of the 30 minute recording limits which is obviously useful for shooting longer format videos like interviews and performances and Canon and Nikon still don't offer unlimited recording on their non-cinema cameras. But at least based on specs on paper, the Canon R5 is probably a little bit better for video because that can do 8K 24 and 30 in 422, while the Sony can only do 8K 24 in 420. And in 8K and 4K 60, the A7R5 has 1.2x crop while the Canon can shoot in full width. But unlike the Canon cameras at launch, it did not overheat while shooting 8K or 4K. It just kept going and going until the SD card was full or the battery was drained. And I don't necessarily want to call this a weakness because I honestly don't know how many people would buy this camera to shoot 8K videos. But in 8K, there's horrendous rolling shutter and any form of movement can turn everything into jello. And it does get a little better in 4K, but still present. And in 1080, it completely goes away. But for what it's worth, the video quality is good and the new IBIS works really well in video. And some of the newer features from other cameras have been carried over as well, like the active mode stabilization and focus breathing compensation. Unfortunately, the active mode is not supported in 8K, but again, not sure how useful that would be anyway. So in conclusion, with the a7R5 compared to the a7R4, you're not necessarily going to see any improvements in your final images, but with the improvements on the body, the new EVF, the autofocus, and the IBIS, 
it will help you get those images a little bit easier. The 8K video is a bit of meh, but it's there if you need it. And it also has 4K 60. And with the new screen, it's a much better hybrid package than before. But if you can live without those upgrades, and if all you care about is the still image quality, you can actually get a used A7R4 and save about a thousand dollars or more. You still get the same sensor and the autofocus will be pretty good and you can spend that money on a lens instead. But if you're upgrading from a camera like the A7R3 or older, I think the upgrade is definitely worth it. It will just feel like a completely different camera altogether. It's pretty amazing how much these cameras have matured in just a few years of time. So that's going to be it for me today. And if you have any more questions about the camera, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll try to get to them all. And thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.